The final criterion is that an area be considered sacred or hallowed. This would seem to be a remote possibility for a rural part of the Hudson River Valley. Or is it? While some researchers cite the presence of a Jewish cemetery, there is another potentially sacred location just outside of town that continues to baffle UFO researchers. This quiet countryside seems a world away from the ancient monuments that dot the European landscape. But there are dozens of mysterious structures that suggest that some ancient people considered this land profoundly spiritual hundreds, if not thousands, of years ago. In this area, there are a number of these standing stones with very ancient structures. And uh, we are convinced that these structures date back to possibly as old as 2000 BC. Enigmatic stone chambers and standing stones dot the valley. Historians debate fiercely who constructed these impressively designed buildings. It's been suggested that they are the work of Native Americans, but the Algonquins tended to build their structures from the plentiful timber in the valley. Others believe the chambers are root cellars, constructed by early European settlers. But a root cellar built above ground won't protect vegetables during the winter. Why were these chambers constructed? Philip Imbrogno, author of Celtic Mysteries, believes that the chambers were built by ancient Celts who maintained a temporary colony in North America. Moreover, he believes the placement of the chambers proves the Celts were following a definite plan. This area seems to attract thousands and thousands of UFO sightings. And he can't explain why, except to say that perhaps it's the organized magnetic lines of the Earth that are almost kind of a magnet for the UFOs themselves, almost like a highway. The chamber's alignment to the stars does seem to match the alignment of ancient monuments in England and Ireland. And stone structures and monoliths played an important role in Celtic religious beliefs. Although no two chambers are identical, they do share some characteristics. Most are rectangular, with an interior approximately six feet high. The chambers are from 10 to 15 feet deep and six to seven feet wide. The walls are made from medium-sized stones, but the ceiling stones are usually seven feet long and one to two feet thick and wide. Like Stonehenge, they seem to be aligned to the position of the setting sun during winter solstice. What's the UFO connection to all this? The way I got interested into these chambers was because of my investigation into the Hudson Valley UFO, where thousands of people from all walks of life saw an enormous object in the sky. So I plotted the general UFO reports on a map, and I found out something interesting. They weren't scattered all over the place. They were concentrated in clusters. The first location we came to was in um, Lake Carmel, New York, and we're walking up the trail looking for something, and I come across an obelisk like this and a chamber. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Next location, another chamber. Correlating with a cluster? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And the next, and I said, after the third and fourth time, I said, this has got to be more than a coincidence. The location of these chambers and these stones has something to do with the idea of UFOs. There is a connection. According to Imbrogno, the Hudson Valley UFO sightings line up geographically with these enigmatic stone structures. There seems to be a strong correlation between, if not the, the um, chambers themselves, the area where the chambers are located and where these UFO sightings occur. It's not just speculation. There is a direct correlation between the UFO sightings, especially in the Hudson Valley and the location of these chambers. Hudson Valley, Sedona, Arizona, Stonehenge in England, all spots on the Earth's grid where energies form a vortex, and those vortexes are gateways, possibly to other universes or other dimensions. The team concludes the area around Pine Bush qualifies as a UFO vortex. When the next site, Stonehenge, is put to the test by the team, will it prove to be more than just a famous tourist attraction? Very slowly. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I did not do that. Did its builders tap into a force that is still attracting something? 
Stonehenge is one of the most famous prehistoric sites in the world. 5,000 years ago, an unknown people began erecting massive stones and aligning them with the sun and stars. Stonehenge is believed to sit on the intersection of several ley lines, and the crisscrossing of these lines could theoretically produce a kind of vortex responsible for the area's long history of anomalous sightings. A consistent history of phenomena and a reputation for being sacred, the team instantly concludes that two of the four criteria for indicating a UFO vortex are fulfilled. Salisbury Plain is the United Kingdom's largest military training area, with more than 12 military installations less than 20 miles from Stonehenge. In fact, during filming, the team, along with Stonehenge itself, was regularly rattled by the powerful sounds of nearby weapon testings. The third criterion for a vortex has been met. The team still needs to determine whether the area also contains abnormal energy signatures. The famous standing stones are only a small part of the Stonehenge complex. The area is ringed with barrows, ancient burial mounds. The barrows are reported to rest on the same energy fields as Stonehenge and also have had sightings associated with them. This is Kenneth Parsons, who's providing us with the 1990 David Tickle footage of UFOs that were shot over the Barrow Mount here at Stonehenge. On and off, there's a manifestation of something up here in the sky. It could be a UFO, or it could be related to these Earth energies. But there's definitely a lot of activity. So things are happening there on that mound. Could well be related to the ley lines here and the Earth energies. May 7th, 1990, record producer David Tickle is taking a leisurely drive across Salisbury Plain on his way to Guildford. At three o'clock, he stops at Stonehenge and videotapes the standing stones and the barrows with an analog video recorder. To his amazement, the camera captures something he can't explain. White objects seem to be appearing and disappearing in the sky over an oval barrow. At the same time, several black objects on the top of the barrow blink in and out of existence, apparently in sync with the objects in the sky. I think these objects could well follow the ley lines because, I mean, it's so close to the Stonehenge monument uh, over these barrows. That could well be a UFO, and these here could be Earth energy. You keep seeing things popping up and down on the mounds, black things. The objects in the sky could possibly be analog video artifacts, flaws that appear when an ultra-bright object overrides the circuitry and produces a false image. But that doesn't explain the dark images appearing on the mound, nor is there any explanation of why the dark balls are appearing and disappearing in time with the white objects. Really? Now, why is the UFO seeming to, like, wink in and out of existence? I don't understand this is why how... it appears and disappears and appears and disappears. This is how these objects often operate. They seem to be uh, dimension hoppers. They, they will go in and out of our reality. You're saying that the UFOs aren't attracted to this area. They, they can be. They're from sent out from. Or... That's what... I have seen them attracted to these sites as well, but I've never seen this.